Welcome back, guys. I'm Mark Wong, and today we are in the tech room, your trusty companion for all things tech. Whether you're a tech enthusiast looking for the latest innovations or a casual user seeking honest reviews, you've come to the right place. Join us as we dive deep into the realm of gadgets, gaming consoles, PCs, and more. In this video, we will be showing you the GPUs you need to avoid while also giving you the best alternatives for each. We've talked about getting the best GPUs for your money in our previous videos. However, it's important to consider the GPUs that you might want to skip. So let's take a look at the graphics card you should avoid at all costs while considering the best alternative for each. To help you further, there are timestamps and direct links to all the products in the description below. Also, it's worth noting that the prices can change from time to time. So again, be sure to take a close look at the direct links for the updated price tags. So let's get started. The fifth GPU we strongly recommend against getting is the RTX 4080. Make no mistake, the 4080 is one of the most powerful GPUs on the market in terms of gaming performance, but it is actually one of the worst 4K GPUs. Let me explain, the cheapest RTX 4080 you can find is priced at over $1,100, making it a poor choice in terms of price to performance ratio. In contrast, if we look at the 4080 Super, it is slightly faster and priced at around $1,000 for the cheapest model. This completely undermines the rationale for purchasing the base RTX 4080. While the 4080 Super is still an excellent alternative to the non-Super version, it isn't the best value graphics card available on the market. It seems the only two reasons to buy the non-Super 4080 are if you find it at an incredibly low price in the used market, or if you're getting a pre-built PC that includes a 4080 at a reasonable price. Aside from those situations, we don't see any justification for choosing the 4080 over its superior, more affordable counterpart, the 4080 Super. That said, opting for the RTX 4080 Super is the smarter choice priced at $1,000. It's more powerful second only to the RTX 4090, offers great 4K performance, and is the more economical option. The fourth GPU we do not recommend is the 4060T 8GB version. The 4060T has two models, an 8GB version and a 16GB version. However, let's focus on the 8GB version and why we do not recommend this card in terms of value for both gaming and content creation. If you're looking to play extremely demanding titles at 1440p, you would want more than 8GB of VRAM, unless you're okay with lowering the settings to medium. Given that this card is priced around $400, its 8GB of VRAM is unacceptable for a card at this price point. If your budget is up to $300, then 8GB of VRAM might be sufficient depending on the settings, resolution, and games you play. However, if you're spending around $400 on a card meant for demanding games at high settings on 1440p resolution, you would expect at least 12GB of VRAM. While the 4060T is intended to be a 1440p graphics card, its limited VRAM can lead to frame drops in the most demanding games, forcing you to lower settings. If you're willing to spend that amount of money, we recommend the Radeon 7700 XT, priced at only $389. This GPU offers 12 gigabytes of VRAM, making it ideal for demanding games even at 1440p. Not only is it more affordable than the 4060T, but it also performs around 14% faster. Therefore, there is no reason to choose the 4060T over the 7700 XT. If we're discussing the 16 gigabyte 4060T, it is a more reasonable choice for productivity tasks such as content creation. However, this does not apply to the eight gigabyte version, which is why we consider it a low value graphics card. While we're in the middle of this discussion, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to see new content. The third GPU on our list is one of the worst budget GPUs available, the RTX 3050. Both the six gigabyte and eight gigabyte versions of this GPU are notorious for their poor value and performance. Starting with the six gigabyte version, this GPU simply does not have enough VRAM to handle graphics intensive games at 1080p. It only performs well in less demanding games. The cheapest version of the 3056 gigabyte model is priced at around $170, making it a terrible value. Instead, you can opt for the Intel Arc A580, priced at $180, which is approximately 25 to 40% more powerful than the 3056 gigabyte version. Additionally, the A580 comes with eight gigabytes of VRAM, making it well-suited for 1080p resolutions at maximum graphics settings in some games. Regarding the 3058 gigabyte model, it does offer faster performance 
than its six gigabyte counterpart. However, it is priced at around $200. At this price point, you can also get the RX 6600 with eight gigabytes of VRAM, which performs around 25% faster on average in game. The reason some people might prefer the 3050 is due to its better ray tracing performance compared to AMD's FSR. However, ray tracing on the 3050 can be disappointing as it can lead to significant frame drops, making it less desirable to enable. Ultimately, there is nothing that the 3058 gigabyte version offers over the RX 6600, which solidifies the 6600 as the better choice. The second worst GPU is the RX 6400, which you may not have heard of. This is largely because this GPU has a poor price to performance ratio. While it is priced at around $124 for the cheapest model, we strongly advise against purchasing this card since it only features four gigabytes of VRAM, limiting you to playing esports titles or Minecraft. Instead, you could get a used 5700 XT for about the same price, which offers double the VRAM and is approximately 235% faster than the RX 6400. Of course, this is just an alternative and many people may not want to purchase a used card. If budget is a concern, we recommend saving up for an RX 6600 instead. Finally, the worst GPU you can buy is the RX 6500 XT. This GPU is priced at around $140 for the cheapest model and offers only four gigabytes of VRAM. While it does provide better performance than the 6400, having just four gigabytes of VRAM is a significant limitation for playing AAA games. If you choose to buy this GPU, be prepared to play older games such as Valorant, Minecraft, and other titles that use older engines for our recommendation. We return to the Intel Arc A580 priced at $180. It offers significantly more performance being around 60% faster while providing eight gigabytes of VRAM, allowing you to play demanding titles at optimized settings on 1080p. And there you have it, folks. The five worst GPUs were with our recommended alternatives. If you like this video and it helped you in any way, please do give it a like and hit the subscribe button. If you have a question or a product you want us to review, be sure to drop your recommendations in the comments below. Until next time, this is Mark signing off, reminding you to stay connected and updated with all of our research into everything that makes our tech rooms great.